Hi, I'm Zikun, and today I'll be presenting implicit neural representations with periodic acceleration functions by Sidman and all. The way we represent signals has a significant impact on how we solve problems. Traditionally, discrete representations for signals are used. In recent years, however, there's been significant research interest on implicit neural representations, which learns a neural network that parameterizes phi to map x to some quantity of interest. So here x is the input. For instance, we can map uh, the 3D coordinates in uh, 3D space to a shape uh, defined by the sine distance of points. Unlike discrete representations, this kind of continuous representations have two major benefits. The first is that they're agnostic to grid resolution and model memory can scale with signal complexity. So for instance, when we are modeling shape in 3D space using a RELU MLP, we might use less hidden units to model a rabbit and we might use more hidden units to represent a room. And the second benefit is that the, their differentiations can be computed automatically. So this may offer a new toolbox for solving inverse problems, such as solving partial differential equations. Nevertheless, there are still problems of this kind of representation. And in particular, most of these implicit neural representations are built on ReLU-based MLPs. Compared to discrete representations, which are shown in the first row, these kind of representation can fail to encode high frequency details. And on the second row, we can see examples of uh, reconstruction results from a ReLU MLP. And as you can see, the edges become blurry and certain details are missing, like the curtains and the frequencies are completely messed up by the network. So the authors of this paper pointed out that this is partly due to the linearity nature of ReLU. And by linearity, we mean that the second or the higher order derivatives are always equal to zero. So MLPs using ReLU as their activation may fail to encode information contained in higher order derivatives of signals. Alternative activations such as hyperbolic tangent or soft plots that are capable of modeling such information in higher order derivatives may not have well behaved derivatives, which we'll talk about later. And one intuition is that, as you can see in this picture, the gradient for value that is greater than two or less than negative three become almost like always the same. So this is a very similar problem to ReLU. And what we want is an activation function with second or higher order derivatives not equal to zero. And we want them to have, we want it to have tractable derivative behaviors. So we don't want like disappearing derivatives or exploding ones. To tackle this problem, the authors proposes sinusoidal representation networks or SIREN, which is a simple MLP network architecture that uses periodic sign as its nonlinearity. So because they use sign, one of the problems is already solved as, sign, as the value of sign is always between zero, one and one if you're not multiplying by a constant. And the derivative is simply a shifted version of sign, like a shifted by a certain phase. So periodic nonlinearities have been investigated repeatedly over the past decades, but so far they have failed to robustly outperform alternative activation functions. And none of the prior works have demonstrated a wide range of application of sign activation. In particular, in this first work, they constructed a hyper network to produce weights of a target network. And the target network uses uh, cosine as the activation function. Even though they, the authors claim that cosine as an activation contributed to their model's performance compared to using ReLU, they didn't really study the behaviors of derivatives or other applications of cosine. And in the second work, which is a rejected submission to ICLR, they also study the using of sine as an activation function. But since they only validated their method on a very simple data set, M MNIST data set, they lack preliminary investigation of potential benefits of sine. So on the contrary, this paper proposes a simple MLT, MLP architecture for implicit neural representations that uses sine as an activation function. 
and they propose a model that fits complicated signals as well as their derivatives robustly. And second is that they provide an initialization scheme for this type of network, and they validate that weights can be learned using hypernetworks. And finally, they demonstrate a wide range of applications. So now I would formally describe the problem setting in this paper. In this paper, we want to find a class of functions phi that satisfies the relation f on the continuous domain of x. So here, phi is implicitly defined by the relation f. And we call neural networks that parameterize phi implicit neural representations. In other words, we want to find phi of x subject to certain constraints cm, each of which relates the function phi or its derivative to quantities of interest ax. So here are some concrete examples of the problem setting. For example, we might want to represent an RGB image using a neural network. So we want to find phi of x such that for each spatial coordinate x, phi of x is equal to the RGB value at that location. And the constraint here is simply the difference between phi of x and f of x. The constraint can also involve gradients, such that the derivatives of the implicit representation matches the gradient of the image that we're modeling. And the architecture of Siren is basically MLPs with sign activations. In the paper, the authors pointed out that Siren needs to be initialized carefully, otherwise it doesn't perform well. And they provided an initialization scheme in the paper. And the key idea is that we want to preserve the distribution of activations such that the final output at initialization does not depend on the number of layers. So we want to initialize the first layer following this rule, and we want to in initialize other layers following this distribution. And the authors prove that doing this ensures that input to each activation follows a standard normal distribution, which they show in the appendix. So I will not go into too much mathematical details here. Now I'll introduce some experiments done by the authors. Starting with natural signals, such as images, they first fit siren supervised by the image defined on pixel coordinates. And here, phi minimizes the discrepancy between phi of x and the ground truth value. A comparison is made between different non-linearities, including value with positional encoding, as mentioned in NERV paper. So here, only siren achieves significantly better PSNR. And it also faithfully reproduces the first and the second derivative of the image and all the other activations failed uh, for the Laplacian. And here we are showing the results for video reconstruction. And Siren maps a time pixel coordinate to an RGB value at that time. And it's directly supervised by the ground truth pixel values. It fits the fine details significantly better than a ReLU MLP. Next, we are showing results for audio reconstruction and in which the, map, the network maps the time point T to an amplitude supervised the ground truth amplitude. Siren is the only architecture to recover the audio as shown here. Next, we're solving Poisson equation with Siren. Instead of the output of, of the network, the gradient or Laplacian of the network is supervised. Only the Siren reconstruct the images much more correctly than all the other approaches using the gradient. So as you can see here in the quantitative results, and it's also the only one that fits the Laplacian well, as shown here. Poisson equation can also be used for image editing, in which we mix gradients of two target images that we want to mix, and we kind of create a composite image. So here we supervise our network with mixed gradient of the source implicit representation we want to mix. And here's the result. As you can see, we got these results with gradient supervision only. Next, the authors will present 3D scenes using Siren. And here's a quick recap of the sign distance function, which is the distance between the points and some surface. The sign of the distance in indicates whether the point is inside the surface or outside. And this is the loss function they use. 
So the interesting part here is that they are supervising their implicit neural representation with their gradient. And in the orange part, it enforces that the magnitude of the gradient of phi must be one e everywhere, which is the requirement of the sine distance function. And the second one is simply uh, forcing the network to output zero for points on the surface. The third one is forcing the direction of the gradient to be formed correctly, such that it's, e it's equal to the normals. And the last one only uh, penalizes uh, phi of x equals to, to zero when x is not on the surface. So here's the result for fitting a room. So we can see that a siren with 1024 hidden units, which is the results on the right, faithfully represent a full-scale room, whereas a ReLU MLP failed to reconstruct the fine details such as curtains or the feet of sofa. So with the same number of hidden units, we can see that siren achieves much better performance than ReLU MLPs. In the next experiment, they solve differential equations. So here's a typical phys uh, equation in physics. And in this case, the output of siren is a complex number represented by two networks for the real and imaginary parts. And as you can see here, only siren is able to reconstruct the wave field correctly and all the other activations fail. And siren even outperformed principal solver as shown here. And it's also mentioned in the paper that Siren took less time to uh, converge compared to a numerical solver, which is pretty uh, impressive if uh, for people from the physics background. And lastly, the authors demonstrate that prior of the shape of functions parameterized by Siren is learnable. Here they use a CNN to obtain latent code for an image, which is then mapped to weights of Siren using a fully connected network. This enables learning a prior for a certain data set and therefore enable in painting from sparse observations. And here the CNN and FCs are trained on the sparse representation and supervised by the ground truths. This is pretty cool because you learn an implicit representation of images such that it's continuous. So this is unlike in painting directly using CNNs in which you have like fixed resolutions for output. In this one, you can have like any resolution you want as you'll be mapping coordinates to their values at that location. So obviously this work is not perfect and here's some limitations that I noticed. The first one is that Poisson image editing is nothing new because it simply makes ingredients. And I think one thing they could have done is to compare their method to traditional CV te technique, or they could simply not include that because I think that's taking a, taking too much space in the paper. And the second is that they didn't give a formal definition of well-behaved, but this is also apparently a very important property of sign activation. And they could have included some proper mathematical definition of this property. The third one is that Siren initialized improperly could have bad performance as mentioned in the paper but they didn't really link this back to the key idea in their initialization scheme. So one thing I think they could have done at least for the, maybe include that in the appendix would be to do an ablation study to show results of Siren not initialized properly. For instance, just randomly initialize them and see how bad they can be. And I feel like this will pro provide some insights into how sirens need to be initialized. And I would imagine if you are applying sign as activation to more complicated network instead of a simple MLP with five layers, you might need to initialize siren differently. And this is uh, a, a very interesting future work direction. And lastly, I wonder if their method to initialize Siren is indeed that novel, because I noticed that PyTorch or TensorFlow also follows a similar default initialization scheme, except, except that it depends on output dimensions. So this is a quick recap of contributions. And that's it for my presentation. Thanks for listening.